Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, The Day Karen Got Fired, A Tale of Entitlement, Bullying, and Ultimate Justice. The second story, Recruiters' response to salary expectations backfires spectacularly. The third story. We quit and agency loses $12 million worth of business. The first story is... Entitled Bully Fired and Escorted from the Building. So for a bit of context, I'm a management consultancy contractor, which for most people means I'm a generalist with one or two specializations. Unfortunately, this is not the case since I'm actually an ex-management consultancy executive, which means I have corporate HR and legal training, which is important later. This happened about eight years ago. I was working on a massive organizational transformation program involving 80,000 staff, with my part covering 40,000 staff. As you can imagine, it's really critical to get buy-in and have high levels of engagement with the staff through a team of consultants with professional behaviors. One of the key aspects of this new way of working was that it should be adopted through a team that embodied the new way of working, and that was our strategy. As part of my work, I needed to build out a team because frankly, there was no way I could do all the work by myself. I have a rule, everyone works, no hierarchy. Even if I had extra duties, I would not ask others to do things I would not do myself. I was fortunate to internally hire a few people, all contractors coming to the end on their existing contracts, who knew the score that as a contractor we work really hard and are focused on competing work not serving time. I also met a person I'll call Miss Awesome. She basically ran the whole program as a PM in the PMO office. I'd helped her rebuild all the reporting in the day as they had moved JIRA versions and expected her to know the new version. Not my job, but I'm a team player and JIRA admin. She in turn suggested a boyfriend for one of my open roles. Let's call him Mr. Awesome. He was, as the title says, a great consultant. Thoughtful, creative, and open to leaning, as we all should be. As part of this drive, I was given a perm member of staff we can call Gail. She talked a great game, but clearly did not understand the mechanics of change or what we were trying to do. Also, she was unaware that her role was being demised at the end of the year, since her skill set was that of a personal assistant and she was not technical. Finally, we get to the EP, let's call her Karen. It's after all her real name. Gail hired her in without telling me which of course was a big red flag. However, I work with people, handing out rope to see what they could do with it. So I get feedback from everyone. It's part of our new way of working, to have daily calls and to take feedback at the executive level across the whole transformation. Clearly everyone has an agenda and personal like or dislike can color what people say. However, actions are very hard to hide. I was not present at the incident, but since there was raised voices involved, I heard about it pretty quickly, from multiple witnesses, but not from anyone involved. As the accountable person, it means I have to investigate, hear everyone's perspective and decide what's best for my client, their reputation, and of course the health of the transformation. First, I email Karen to ask her about the incident and ask her to explain what happened and why I had not been told about it. Her response was that she worked for Gail, that she did not report to me, and that it was none of my business. I was surprised with this response since it was so defensive and all of it was wrong. Everyone in the team was coming out of my multi-million pound budget, Okay, note to self, catch up with Gail on a couple of points. Same email to Mr. Awesome, he explained that Karen had tried to order him to do some of her work. He explained to Karen that he was busy with work I had set him. She became aggressive and told him that she worked for the perm Gail, and that if he did not do as she said, she would get him fired. He refused. I sent another email asking why he had not told me, and he said he did not want to make things worse. I asked him to keep notes on any further engagement with Karen or Gail. At this point, I had done the baseline investigation, so I contacted our HR business partner for advice. It's really important to create data points because at this point, I was not sure what had happened or why regardless of what I had been told. Next, I contacted Gail because she had hired Karen. I asked about what had happened and Karen's belief that she did not work for me. Gail confirmed that Karen had told her that Mr. Awesome had been aggressive when she asked for help and that she was happy to work this through with Karen and Mr. Awesome. I think she was really surprised when I said no. I had previously asked for Karen's CV but had not arrived. I now formally requested it as part of the investigation. She complied as she could see where this was going. It turned out that Karen had no skills or experience related to the work she was being asked to do by me through Gail. 
and it transpired that Gail was using her as a PA. For context, the contact PA was on 150 pounds a day, and Karen was on 600 pounds a day as Gail had got her this job. The fog was becoming clearer now, Karen was being put on the spot to cover up the fact that she did not know how to do the work. Unfortunately, because I had conflicting stores, the next step was to interview everyone involved. I first requested a chat with Karen. She found excuses to not have the meeting. Mr. Awesome arranged one ASAP. I had my meeting with Mr. Awesome. He did not embellish anything, but was quite disturbed by the threat to his job by Karen. I informed him that neither Karen nor Gail had any such authority, and that HR had been engaged regarding the incident. He looked relieved and asked about what happens next. I advised I would give Karen the same opportunity to give her side, and then speak to the witnesses. Over a two-week period, I tried to nail Karen down to a meeting every time she came up with an excuse about a meeting or a call, which I knew to be a lie since I could see her calendar. Given this behavior, I contacted HR again, advised my experience so far, Karen's behavior and lack of professional skills. They advised that I terminate her contract and have a member of security on the floor should they be needed. I finally managed to get a meeting with Karen. Gail was present. However, Karen would not come into the meeting room. At this point, I was still willing to work with her, but unfortunately, she aggressively told me from the open plan office space I had no authority over her. I expect it was a great show from the main office. I invited her into the room. She refused again. At this point, I'd had enough. I called a security guard and then told her to put her ID card on the desk and that she would be escorted out of the building. And this is when it went nuclear. She went insane, shouting and cursing just in time for the security guard to arrive. He took her ID pass, would not let her pick up the work computer, and escorted her from the building. Mr. Awesome and Miss Awesome were in the open plan office space and saw everything. Gail just carried on as if nothing had happened. By the way, Mr. Awesome and Mrs. Awesome are now married with children. Well, well, well. It seems like Karen's reign of entitlement came crashing down faster than a house of cards in a windstorm. The antics that Karen engaged in provided more drama than a daytime soap opera, ranging from her erroneous belief that she was in charge to her lack of skills that were concealed beneath layers of excuses. Meanwhile, our protagonist, who exemplifies professionalism to the fullest extent, handled the situation with dexterity, navigating through Karen's labyrinth of lies and deceit like a seasoned detective. With HR on speed dial and security on standby, Karen's grand exit from the building resembled a scene straight out of a reality TV show. Kudos to Mr. and Mrs. Awesome for witnessing this spectacle and emerging unscathed, their love story blooming amidst the chaos. When all was said and done, Karen's departure served as a cautionary tale for anyone who has the audacity to underestimate the power that comes from having integrity and competence. The second story is... Had a recruiter contact me for a job. And when I told them my desired salary and expectations, they got actually mad at me. So I'm not job searching right now, but I was about six months ago, so I still have my resume up on some job sites. I like to get alerts for jobs in my field just to see what's out there. Right now, I'm a gig worker. So I hop from job to job, but I'm in a union. Average, I make between 90 to 120k a year. Through my union I have, as long as I'm working steadily, 100% paid for health insurance, a 401k and a pension plan. I'm pretty happy with what I do. Only thing is it can be a bit unnerving hopping job to job, so I keep my eyes open for something corporate and more stable in my field. A recruiter reached out to me through a job hiring site I'm a member of. It was some 9 to 5 office job in line with my skills. She emailed me saying she was very interested in speaking to me and would like to interview me. After some back and forth, the job sounded interesting enough to at least interview for. I also went through the motions of making sure it wasn't a scam. But before we went that far, I asked about pay scale. She responded with one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, what is your expected salary for such a role? Such an SH way to either try and underpay someone who doesn't know how to ask for more, or to pressure a person who knows their worth into taking less. Since I don't need this job and could give two Fs, I just tell her bluntly, right now I make around 100k a year with a 401k and pension plan. Also, my insurance premiums are 100% covered at no cost to me, so you'd have to offer me better in some way for me to have any desire to interview for the role. What I got back was a very snippy email. Won't post word for word, but the general gist of it was, that's way out of our budget for this role, and quite frankly, an unreasonable expectation. We're no longer interested in you as a candidate for making such demands. For future endeavors, I recommend you keep yourself more appealing to prospective employers by reducing your standards to something more in line with your skills. You'll never find work with this attitude. B, I just told you this is what I'm making right now. It's not in your budget, fine, 
but don't tell me what I am and am not worth. FFS. Edit. So I'm going to answer some common questions I keep seeing just to streamline a bit. How do you have such great benefits as a gig worker? Union. It's literally stated in the post, y'all. Stop letting corporations lie to you. Do you really make 90k a year, or are you just assuming based off one gig salary? I based my salary range off what I claimed on my taxes the last three years. Lowest I made was 90k, highest was 120k. Do I really think I could get the same salary I make as a gig worker at a corporate job? Y'all, I don't know. That wasn't really the point of the post. Report the recruiter. I lodged a complaint on the job application site. This is such an absurd story. One would think that recruiters would have some common sense, but there are a lot of ridiculous situations here. When someone is just expressing their expectations honestly, how can you criticize them? It would be like telling a cat not to chase mice. Simply acknowledge that such a salary is out of your budget and express gratitude for the information. However, such a harsh response? In the world of audacity, did the recruiter choose to go their own way? It might have been a ploy to save money on pay, but the outcome was, as usual, action movie style. I'll tell you what you're worth, and you'll never find a job with that attitude. It's just not reasonable to expect someone who works harder to accept a lower salary. I would advise them to raise their standards to something in more line with market value in order to make themselves more appealing to potential employees if they truly want to find workers. They'll never find employees with that attitude. The third story is Nepotism and racism rule in my previous ad agency. I joined one of the biggest ad agencies as an account manager on a big brand. Said brand was huge but only spent about 10% of their annual marketing budget with us. My team consisted of a couple of no-nonsense creative directors and graphic artists who had joined the place a little before I had. I threw myself into my job, learning more about the market, the target consumers, the competition etc etc. Being a bit of an artist myself, me and my creative directors hit it off and worked great together, bouncing ideas off each other, exploring new avenues, etc. By the end of the first year, the client had spent over 2 million US dollars with us, an increase of 30%. We all got a pat on the back, a good raise and a promotion. Things were looking good for year two until the CEO was replaced by the 30-year-old son of the majority shareholder. We continued as is, slowly expanding the portfolio of work to include digital advertising. By the end of the second year, the client had spent $4 million plus, and the recession hit. So instead of a pay rise, etc., our pay was cut. Despite this, we worked our A's off and included events and print production into the range of work we did for my client. Into the third year, the client had spent $8 million and was the second biggest client for the agency. So what did this now 32-year-old CEO do? Give us a tiny raise and brought in a friend of his as my boss. This was compounded by the fact that we ended up finding out that all the employees of the same race and nationality as him got a 20% raise, while the rest got a 5% raise. I promptly resigned and went and joined another agency. The rest of my team followed suit. Six months down the line, the client had terminated the contract with them. A few months later, they messed up on a campaign by another brand, where my wife is the head of marketing. This said brand canceled their contract with them as well. Loss of business, 12 million US dollars. This story is a vivid example of how nepotism and racism can destroy even the most prestigious agencies. Instead of rewarding you for your success, you were offered only a limited salary increase, and then a new manager was introduced to your team, a friend of the CEO who had no experience in the industry, except for being a friend of the owner. And selective support for only a certain race and nationality is an extreme injustice. I'm not surprised that the author and his team left the agency, and the results were not long in coming. A loss of business worth millions of dollars. It's amazing how an unwise leadership approach can destroy everything, even the largest organization. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.